this is gonna be a fun video. Today we're reviewing a $15 CPU air cooler that I accidentally bought when we were in China in 2019. You might ask yourself, how do you accidentally buy a $15 weird CPU air cooler with Dragon decals on it? And the answer is, uh, I have a really bad habit of when I don't understand the question in Mandarin, I just say yes. And so now we have one of these and I paid for it because I felt bad turning it down at that point. So we're gonna be reviewing it today. It's actually a surprisingly good cooler for the size at 15 bucks, pretty good deal. And you can buy these on Alibaba for about the same price we paid if you buy 500 of them. Let's get started. Before that, this video is brought to you by Lian Li Lee's O11D Evo case. The O11D Evo is a mid-tower that tested well previously with us and is most interesting for attention to fine details and its unique features. One of those is the easy to use invertible layout. The O11D Evo inversion process is the easiest we've ever worked with on a case, allowing it to flip entirely for a unique upside down build or work as a standard layout. The O11D Evo has two chambers for the system and the power supply, support for up to nine storage drives and edge to edge glass for a showcase while still offering excellent airflow through side and bottom intakes. Learn more at the link in the description below. Okay, so this cooler, the English name is Coolwist. CN326 Extreme. The Chinese name for the company is Kuwei Shi Te, which is just coolest, except a sound translation. And the cooler name is Qin Long, which is just Green Dragon. And by the art on it, it makes sense. Now, one thing you should know about this cooler is that the art on this, when we reverse Google image searched it, Andrew took a photo of this, uh, did a reverse search, and the, the use of this artwork on this particular cooler is perhaps questionable. We're not sure. We were unable to verify whether they're allowed to use this artwork on their cooler, but they did. So that's what we have now. The game that this comes from uh, in English is just called the Legend of Gods and Ghosts, or God's Ghost Legends. And in Chinese, the name is Shen Gui Chuan Qi, which is, uh, what, what was the year of that game? came out. So my expert, Andrew, behind the camera has informed me that the game came out in about 2008. From what we could tell, didn't have a ton of fanfare and appears to be a desktop game, perhaps in sort of the, the RuneScape updated graphics era, if you remember that. So anyway, it's a CPU cooler now. <laughs> and, uh, this is the cooler. You know, honestly, genuinely, at $15, the amount of surface area you get here is pretty impressive because we'll show some other ones on the screen that we've reviewed. But you got like the Nocto NH-U12S Redux at $50. It's significantly smaller. Now, the fan is much higher quality than this one, to be fair. But it's hard to compete with uh, something that's just sold in Shenzhen SEG eMarket, which, by the way, you should watch that video. That place is awesome. Like, you thought the Micro Center video is cool. The SEG eMarket is insane. It's the biggest electronics market in the world. Uh, and we got to go there. So that's where we got this. That's why it was so cheap. Now, these are typically sold in bulk. You can find them online. We're able to find a couple singles out there for about $26 to $30, as opposed to the 500 unit options at $15. Breaking news, I've just been informed by Andrew that actually there's an important correction to make to our video. The Dragon Qinlong came out in a 2011 DLC update to the Legends of Gods and Ghosts. I don't know if he's played it yet, but I'm not gonna ask. Well, let's talk about mechanics of this cooler. So sizing, this cooler is uh, about 146 millimeters wide this direction by 99 millimeters in this direction. And then for height, it's about 160 millimeters. So 160 millimeters in height does limit its compatibility in a good amount of mid ATX cases. Those typically support about 150, 155. Uh, but as you can see, it's because it's got a 140 millimeter fan on it. So this immediately makes it really interesting because $15, 140 mil fan, single tower cooler that's fairly large is potentially going to be a very competitive performer. So for the cold plate here, you can see it's an exposed copper cold plate. And this ends up being about 40 by 45 millimeters, really good surface area for that. You could contact a full AMD Ryzen IHS with that, it's fairly large. And then it's got six heat pipes running through it. These are six mil nickel plated copper heat pipes 
probably centered. We haven't cut them open. And for the base plate here, this is just mostly part of the mounting mechanism. So you mount the brackets here. We'll show those later to secure it to the motherboard. So you can see there's a really slight dicing on top of the fins. This isn't sponsored by uh, Dyson, just to be clear. And that doesn't do a whole lot. There's not a ton of surface area there. Uh, theoretically, it does a little bit to help, but really most of the performance is going to come out of the tower itself. For the sticker, the sticker is just secured uh, adhesive by adhesive to the top. When we wrote the script originally, it was actually holding up really well. It wasn't peeling at all. We've handled it a lot now for filming and stuff. You can see it's starting to come up a little bit at the edges here. But uh, overall, I'd say it's in great shape. And honestly, the print resolution is excellent here. Uh, I Today, I don't think I probably wouldn't buy this today. But when I was building my first computers when I was like 15 or something, I would have loved a cooler like this. And even still today, I do. I, so genuinely. I do like that they're doing something different here in the same way that we like the Yeston Cute Pet video card, where that one did something unique and it was still a pretty good product at the end of the day. So it's just, it's nice to have a diversion from the usual, let's make a metal silver colored fin stack and then put a fan on it, uh, doing something different at least. Intellectual property stuff probably could be handled better, but I don't know. You can't complain too much, I guess. For the fan, the cooler comes with one of these. This is the model AS14025. It's 140 mil. It's 25 millimeters uh, thick for the fan. It's a PWM fan, and it's 12 volts at 0.25 amps. The power out of this, or the, the performance overall, is not listed anywhere. As far as we, we could not find it on their website, we couldn't find it in a manual. It's like the product doesn't exist at all. It's a mystery cooler. And the fan itself is also a mystery. This is all the specs we can get on this thing, printed physically on the box and a little bit here on the back. The fan ends up with a claimed range of 600 to 1200 RPM. So at 140 mil, it's going to cap out pretty early. One thing, though, that I want to call attention to is that the support from this company, even though they haven't updated their copyright notice, maybe, OK. Maybe that's not the best way to measure. They don't really seem to care about that. So anyway, Coolest hasn't updated its copyright notice on its website since 2014. Even with that, the company responded to our request for an AM4 mounting kit and sent it. And this is like years after it was ever relevant, if it was ever relevant. So that was just as a normal customer where we got it for like 4 bucks and shipping, and they sent it over. Pretty good customer service for something that was $15. OK, enough of the walkthrough of this. That's sort of the, the physical inspection, the mechanics of it all, the uh, dragon that's on it. And now we can get into some of the pressure benchmarks, the flatness, the thermal testing, and see if it's actually any good. At $15, it's going up against things like the stock coolers, which are free, and maybe the Vetri V5 at $30, $35. The CN3206 utilizes the stock AM4 backplate provided with the motherboard. Brackets are installed into the cooler at the bottom side, after which point four plastic standoffs get placed over where the backplate protrudes through the motherboard. This is all pretty standard. Of course, at this point, the thermal paste gets applied. You would mount the cooler to the CPU, and then you'd secure the brackets to the backplate using the included screws. The installation procedure for Intel sockets is identical. It just uses different brackets for alignment with the holes in the board. Despite being secure and overall easy to install, the mount pressure was inconsistent, and it allowed for more pressure than necessary for a secure mount. This inconsistency shows up easily in our pressure scans, which we'll get to in a minute. In addition to this, the AM4 mount was clearly an afterthought because it forces the cooler to either pull air from the GPU upwards or push air from the top of the case towards the GPU, neither of which is optimal. For our tests, we oriented the fan so that it pushes air towards the GPU to align with the airflow of our liquid cooler tests. As for the fan, the included 140mm fan secures to the cooler via clips, which are incredibly annoying to use and are clearly generic clips rather than being designed for this cooler. They do hold the fan, but they don't actually hook into the fan, so it takes some work to mount it without dropping one of the clips. This isn't new. We've seen this a lot of times before. It's gotten less common in recent years, but it's always been problematic because there's more of a chance you drop one of these uh, or it just falls off with time and potentially short something in that scenario. The documentation for the coolest CM326 is also disappointing. The only documentation is the information on the side of the box, which lists basic specifications about the dimensions, the fan speed, and the installation. And those installation 
instructions, if you can call them that, are four photos. There's two per socket type, and they show the cooler installed, and then another photo with someone touching the mount with a screwdriver. It's not nothing, but calling it instructions is a bit of a stretch. We also couldn't find any sort of documentation on the Coolers website, which itself is barren, uses tables, and has an outdated 2014 copyright notice on it. Now, there is a newer website for Coolest Group, but that site doesn't list any CPU coolers. And it appears that the company now primarily manufactures humidifiers and similar products. Still though, the Coolest CN326 arrived with the mounting hardware it had listed on the box, and they provided us with an AM4 bracket when we contacted them. And if anything, this speaks volumes to the customer service. We really weren't expecting to get any response about this thing. So we were impressed with the fact that we did. Next up, we're going to look at some of the tests now. This one looks at the distribution of pressure across the IHS. This specifically evaluates the efficacy of the mounting hardware rather than the flatness of the cold plate, which we'll look at next. We test this using chemically reactive materials and a special NIST traceable scanner that was all made possible for purchase through all of our supporters on Patreon. You can head over to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to join them, or you can support us via our store by buying products like our toolkits, mod mats, mouse mats, shirts, and other items at store.gamersnexus.net. Thanks to all of you for making what we do possible. So here's the pressure scan. The pressure on the IHS is strongest on the left and right sides. The middle of the cold plate with the 3950X showed low pressure in the top middle and some reduced pressure centrally. With the 3800X, the middle was better, but the top and bottom edges suffered from lower pressure to the point where our scanner was unable to detect it. These results aren't terrible, especially for this price point, but they are far from impressive. This indicates that the mounting system could be better to more evenly distribute contact. But overall, we don't expect these results to be a substantial issue for a low-end cooler like this one. All these gaps can be filled with thermal paste, and some gaps are expected in all coolers. What's important, though, is that it doesn't have gaps everywhere. And this one does okay with that. It's relatively good for contact. Our next test looks at the surface flatness of the cold plate. This is done with an extremely precise needle and from a known zero point measured in microns delta from that zero point. The Coolest CN326 Extreme compared to the other coolers on the chart, or at least air coolers, has an average surface flatness with a slightly worse range of depth than the other coolers in our data set. Overall though, the CN326's cold plate flatness is good and is close to much more expensive coolers that we've tested in the past. It isn't anything special, but for its price point, it's above average. And even for $30 coolers, it's within the average. We're just happy to see that we didn't have any huge variants like we did with the Corsair A500 or the Arctic Freezer 34, although the latter of which was more of a QC issue than a design issue, and it's also exiting the boundary for scaling reasons. As for performance, thermally, the CN326 is geared towards low to mid-tier CPUs. So for our test today, we're using a lower R5 heat load only. There's really no point in testing the higher end heat loads that we work with because it's just not designed for them and it won't do well. The 68 watt heat load is representative of R5 or non-K i5 CPUs and i3 CPU heat loads. We really wouldn't recommend using the CN326 above that. And at $15, it's mostly competing with things like stock coolers as an upgrade. First up is our noise normalized test. In this test, the noise levels of the coolers are set to the same 35 dBA at 20 inch noise level to provide an even playing field. This prevents any coolers from brute forcing their way to the top with loud and high RPM fans. But in our next test, we'll look at the peak cooling performance. And to be clear, all the coolers use their included fans. There's no change at all to the hardware other than to set a 35 dBA system noise level. At 35 dBA, the cooler CN326 comes in at 40 degrees Celsius over ambient while under load. This places it at the same level as the Vetri V5, which is a $30 cooler, and the Noctua NHU12S, Redux that is, which is a $50 cooler. The CN326 is also 8 degrees cooler than the iGuo Shadow Max V5, our other mystery cooler from AliExpress. The coolest CN326 fan is the lowest RPM of any in our data set at approximately 945, which exposes its biggest weakness. Despite coming to roughly the same performance level as some of these more expensive coolers, the fan being much louder while running a much lower RPM indicates poor efficiency with the fan in general and potential issues with the bearing or motor being needlessly noisy. In terms of efficiency, the CN326 is lacking in its motor and its fan. Cooling performance is comparable to its peers, 
It's just not done with the grace that you would get from the others. Next up is our 100% fan speed test with the same 68 watt R5-3600. Unlike the prior test, this test is designed to show each cooler's maximum cooling performance, so a cooler with more powerful or more plentiful fans should be able to pull ahead, at the expense of more noise, of course. In this test, the 326 is again tied with the Vetri V5 at 39 degrees above ambient. It's also 2 degrees hotter than the Scythe Fuma 2, 3 degrees hotter than the AMD Wraith Prism, and 5 degrees cooler than the iGuol Shadow Max V5. At 100% fan speed, the Cool CN 326 came in at 39 dBA, which is about as loud as the NH-E12S Redux, and 4 dBA quieter than the Vetri V5 and iGo Shadow Max. But it's also fairly limited in its max fan RPM. Once again, the Scythe Fuma 2 tops our charts in both cooling performance and noise, with the exception of the Noctua NHP1. So overall, the cooler is actually a pretty good performer for the price, at least that we paid for it. Now, we got it in a little bit of a weird way, where we were in Shenzhen SEGE market uh, in, about, again, about 2019. I walked up to the vendor of the stall and I asked, I tried to ask for uh, open loop water cooling. And you can see how, you can see how good my communication skills were in Mandarin in 2019. They've improved a little bit, but yet to be tested in the real world. So uh, that's what we ended up with. Now, whether you would get it for $15, I have no idea. But online, it seems to range from $16 to $30. We would not recommend paying over $30 for this. If you happen to like what you see and you find it online, AliExpress, Alibaba, whatever, uh, it really just doesn't seem like it's worth $30 plus. You've got the Vetri V5 in there and all kinds of other stuff. That's a little bit more modern and, and the fan aspect, at least. The fan is the weak point here. The motor is not particularly good. Uh, the efficiency of the fan is not particularly good. So you end up with something that the downsides are performance related. It does fine comparatively in thermals, but the uh, efficiency at which it reaches those thermal numbers is not really good compared to the more expensive coolers that we've reviewed more recently, the newer stuff. So quick recap then of the good and the bad. The good, the performance is very competitive actually. The price we paid was good. The price we've seen online is pretty good if you can get them to sell you one. And on the bad side, uh, the fan is a weak point. And additionally, the fact that AM4 was clearly an afterthought is a downside where you're going to end up with it mounted uh, instead of like this in a standard case, it'll be like that. So you're going to either be pulling in from the top of the case, pushing down into the card, or from the back side of the card up, which just isn't great because it's very, it's not really about where is the hot and the, the cold air coming from. It's more about the impedance created by the GPU or the, well, by the GPU either going out of the cooler or going into the cooler. So that's not great if you're on AM4. Uh, now to counter that, the fact that Cool, I don't know if they'll still do this today, but the fact that Cool was responded to an email that I just sent it in English and it was as a customer. So there's really no, I was not expecting a response at all. The fact that we got a response uh, from their Hong Kong office and they shipped us a mounting kit is far better service than I would have ever expected for a cooler that appears to be discontinued or have been forgotten about by the company that made it. So that was kind of cool. Uh, anyway, the Vetri V5 is a good competitor here. We want to look at more stuff like this. If you see something fun on AliExpress, Alibaba, Amazon, uh, eBay, anywhere but maybe Newegg right now, then let us know and we'll take a look because uh, this type of cooler is always, it's, it's nice to see something different for once and it's still fairly competitive. Just when you try to buy open loop water cooling, uh, don't forget the, to put the, the open and the water part in the sentence. When you're, or, it's not just San Ruchi, it's Sri Lan San Ruchi. So that was my mistake, now you know. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more as always. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. And we'll see you all next time.